Right guys and girls, I'm Obsidian Ant and welcome back to Elite Dangerous. Now just recently I noticed a forum thread asking questions about the new trade options on the Galaxy map. And I thought it a good opportunity to put together a quick video just showing how to use the trade options there as well as how to use the new trade options on the commodities screen and these have all come together in patch uh, 3. The very first thing we're going to do then is take a look at the Galaxy map and we can check some of these new filters out. So Yep, here we are, and we've got the filter over here set to realistic at the moment, so it's showing all the stars in their apparent realistic colours. And we can go to map, and this is what we're looking for here. So we've got trading routes. This is something a little bit different to uh, the commodities data, but we'll get to this in just a moment. So first, we're going to have a look at the commodity filter. Now what we're seeing here, we're seeing the import price and we've got the export price and we can actually have both at once. And you can see over here is the little blue icon and if there's an export price in range there'd be a green icon like we can see here. Now what's very important that you've got to keep in mind here is that this will only show data for areas that you've previously visited. If you've never docked at a station in any one of these systems then you won't have data for it unfortunately. So yep, you need to dock to every single system in order to get the trade data and your system or your computer system will then remember that data. Also, do keep in mind that whatever you see here will be live data. It will reflect the price that's currently at that particular station. So right now we've got the filter set to uh, chemicals and we're over here. If I just press the home key, you can see we're in the tool for system and looks like tool for actually exports uh, explosives and that's the export price there 330 credits and we're at Kalim or Kalim Orbital that's not where I'm docked but Kalim Orbital is the station that that's exporting at that price we can actually switch between these but we're not really interested in them because they're a very low value this just gives you a bit of a good idea of what systems you've got data for at any rate so let's have a look at something that does uh, trade for a decent amount of money so we go to metals we've got aluminium here or aluminum i guess if you're from the united states um so we can import here that here and need them keep will pay 680 credits for for aluminium so on something a bit higher valued maybe palladium or gold would be got good options so uh, palladium let's see who's exporting. So Alpha Centauri are exporting a Palladium at 12,560. So what we really need to find is an import system. These are all importing Palladium and we'd need a higher price to make that profitable. So you can see Seoul is actually importing that for 14,020 credits and it's actually put both filters on there. So we can actually make a trade route between Alpha Centauri and sold and they're both very very close together and what you'd get just slightly shy of 1500 credits profit per trip but bear in mind that would be only a one-way trip from alpha centauri to Seoul, and not a two-way trip now there is another filter here that often seems to be confusing people and that is the uh trade data filter and we scroll down to that and select it now this is oh, one other thing i do want to mention is that all the data both the commodities filter and the trade one here will only show you systems within a 40 light year range, a 40 light year bubble basically. So anything outside of that, you add a like and you won't be able to see. So the red, da the red dots here are for data that's not available. And that basically means that there's no space station or no market inside of this system. I would just prove a point by jumping into there. You can see there's no market here. So we can actually get rid of that because it's not that much use and we can then see we've got blue dots and the orange dots orange dots represent data that we've already purchased or we've already got access to blue dots is data that's available but that we don't have access to so we're just going to actually hop through a few of these and purchase the trade data this is where the confusion comes from the trade data here is not market data it's actually trending data i'm going to show you what that is all about hopefully we can actually start to see something on that in just a moment so I'm going to quickly go through a few of these and they're very close together make these purchases 
Right, so I've actually gone through a few of these and made the data purchases. There's a few missing still, but I didn't want to do any more clicking. And I really don't know why there's not a purchase all data within range option, as that would make a lot more sense. At any rate, like I mentioned earlier, this is not strictly speaking market data. This won't show you information on your commodities market. What it does do is show you trading routes that other, other people, other players or NPCs have used over the past 24 hours. So here we've got the commander selected, that's players, and if we click on data, or metals, we can see what routes other players have actually traded over the past 24 hour period. And if we scroll into here, we can actually go individually down and find which particular metals have actually been traded. So some of the more valuable ones, there's a palladium trade route. And again, keep in mind, this is what players have been doing. So players have been taking palladium from Tau Ceti to Seoul. We don't know what profit they're getting because we don't have access to that level of information. I haven't actually docked at, at Tau Ceti, I don't think. Or maybe I have, we can have a look in just a moment. So basically this gives you a bit of an idea, or a bit of an insight into the sort of commodities and trade routes that have actually been in use. And some of these, seeing as they're player made trade routes, are likely to be quite profitable. Now there is a third way of finding trade routes directly within the game, and this one is perhaps the easiest, it's directly from the commodities market. Now this screen looks mostly the same, but there's a new filter, we click on Galactic Average, and we can actually search by market. And we saw on the Galaxy that people were trading to Seoul from various systems. So let's select Seoul here. We type that in, press enter, and I have docked at Seoul before, so we can see all the markets there. And we can scroll through the various different markets. And Daedalus is one of the perhaps more popular stations there, so we're gonna quickly say okay to that. And what this is, oh, one other thing I do wanna show is that we can switch between import or export, and they will show us two different profits. So what it looks like then, you can see here, is that we can make 1,400 tons, 1,400 credits per ton profit on gold, as well as indium as well. And we can do the same with beryllium. And what else have we got? Tantalium is over 1,000 credits per ton profit. It does give us some good trade routes. I mean, these are not super fantastic, but they're not bad. And again, we can bring uh, superconductors here and make 1,560 credits profit per ton. So that's probably the best uh, trade route right there. And over here, we can see import from Daedalus, Seoul. So then, as you can see, chapter one has three new ways of finding trade routes. And they've all got different levels of detail. The galaxy map is a bit clunky, or extremely clunky to be honest, and I don't find it that useful. But nonetheless, the data's there, and it's visually represented. The other option is looking for what other players have done, and this one, I think, is going to be the best indicator as to where to perhaps find the most profitable trade routes. And the third one, and the most easiest to use, is a new screen on the commodities market. However, all that said, all three of them are reasonably clunky, and they don't beat their third-party external websites. And right now we're going to boot up eddb.io and have a quick look at how we can find a trade route right there for comparison's sake. So eddb is one of the more popular websites out there containing all manner of information for the game, but it's by no means the only website. Inara is another one, but this one tends to be the one I use the most often. So you can find a number of different, uh, there's a number of different methods on here for finding trade routes. But we're going to go directly to commodities because we've got specific information that we got from the game. And I just want to use it for comparison's sake just initially. So industrial materials and superconductors. And from here we can get all the information on where superconductors are actually sold or brought. So we're going to go to Tulfa. And we can choose a buy or sell. Now we want to sell these to Tulfa. And we can choose landing pad size if we so desired. So Crook Hub, which is where we were in the game, is paying 7,497 credits for the superconductors. We can then look here and click on buy. Uh, find stations again. They will, they will show us stations nearby to Tulfa at a reasonable price. And all of these 
the places where we could go and buy them and get very close to the 1500 credits profit. It seems Z is one of the best places to go. Now we do have other ways of finding trade routes. We can find a single hop trade route, multi-hop trade routes, loop routes and so on. Now loop routes are always pretty good because you can start at, at Tulfa for example, go to Seoul and then from Seoul back to Tulfa again and continue doing that until you've made as much money as you want or until the commodities have actually run out. Single hops are just A to B and then you can have multiple routes. So we're just going to have a look at a quick loop and we put in our current location, Tulfa, and basically it will find us a trade route very, very quickly. Much quicker than messing around within the game, of course. And just look at that, 5,600 credits profit per ton. So significantly higher than what I was able to find in the game. But if I spent a lot of time traveling around, docking and undocking, as well as buying different trending routes, eventually I probably would have found something like this. But without a doubt, it would have taken quite a lot of time, unless I had a bit of an indication of where to go to first. That said, do keep in mind that as you build up all your database within the game, as you dock at more different stations, you will of course get far closer to this functionality as you collect more and more data. One final note is that this is probably not the best trade routes in the game, there's going to be far better ones out there. This merely comes from data uploaded from players' sessions. So any trades that people want to keep secret won't be represented here. Ultimately then, the game has made a fair few changes how to find your trades, but really it still could go a little bit further personally I feel, although some may say that EDDB is cheating when it comes to actually finding profitable routes. End of the day though, it's down to personal preference. I hope this has been somewhat helpful, if perhaps a little bit long. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.